I'm Dr. Daniel First at the University of California in Los Angeles, and with me today is Mr. who has been kind enough to allow me to demonstrate the way I do skin scores in patients with systemic sclerosis. What I'm going to do is start at the top and work my way down. First, I have the patient sitting in a relaxed position. When I start my examination, I examine the face first, over the zygomata and the uh, mandibles. I don't examine the middle because all of us have some extra folds here. When I do the skin score, zero is normal. One plus is the ability to fold the skin, but there are some wrinkles. Two is the wrinkles are there, but there's a good deal more thickness. And three is there thickening without any wrinkling. And what you can see here is that there's some wrinkling and some thickening. So in this case, this is a one plus. And you'll notice that I do both sides, and then I go down over the, um, the, man the uh, mandible, as you see here. When I examine the chest, I examine over the clavicles, out to the shoulders, to the anterior axillary line, above the breasts, and then down over the xiphoid. It turns out that the most sensitive place is right over the xiphoid. But you have to do the folding of the skin in both sides symmetrically over the whole area. And you'll notice that in Mr. there's an area here where there's a little bit of wrinkling and a little bit of thickening. So this is one plus. And I average. Some people are maximizers taking the maximum score. I average. So there's one plus here and over here where there's wrinkling and no thickening is zero. Combine the two, it's one plus. Because if there's any in the area at all, there must be at least a one plus. When I move to the arm, I go to the outer part of the arm from the uh, shoulder joint down to the elbow, the antecubital fossa, and I do it on the outer side. The inner side of the arm is nearly always normal, so this is not a place to do your exam. When you do this exam here, right over this area, you'll see that when you do the scoring over here, the most sensitive area is right here, or just behind the elbow. So I systematically examine the whole arm. And you'll notice here, for example, there's good wrinkling and no thickening. Whereas here, you can see it's fairly thick and there's a little wrinkling. So this is 2 plus. So this area is 2. This is 0, so the average is 1. You'll also notice that his arm is completely relaxed at approximately 90 degrees. Turns out that if it isn't, and if there's tensing of the muscles, then the skin score appears much higher than it actually is. So it's quite important to have the arm relaxed and at about 90 degrees. When we're examining the forearm, it's from the antecubital fossa on the outside of the arm down to the wrist in this area. And once more, when you're examining, systematically go over the whole arm, as I'm doing here, and you will notice that I go over this every place you, I did my exam. It, in fact, is easy to wrinkle and not thickened here with one small area, which is analogous to the fascia lata, where there is a little bit of thickening. So here, once more, this area is 1. All of this is 0, but any 1 makes the whole thing 1. When I come to the dorsum of the hand, it's from the wrist over the, hypo, uh, over the thenar eminence, across the MCPs, and out of the outer part of the hand. So it's this part is the hand. And again, the examination is across, like this, feeling for being able to raise the skin and look for wrinkles. Now this is a very important point. If you look at his skin, you can see that I can wrinkle it, but it in fact is also quite thin. This skin is tethered. Tethering is not thickening. So even though the skin is tethered, it's a score of zero here. On the other hand, over here, 
No, actually, there's no place here where there's any thickening. So this is zero. When I do the fingers, I do the fingers in a relaxed position, the whole finger. The most easy place is the proximal phalanges, like this, or the thumb. And you have to examine these with a lot more force. So I'm examining with a lot more force to try and wrinkle the skin. And you'll notice here that right here, there's a little bit of thickening without much wrinkling, whereas here you can see the wrinkles a little bit. The point of this is that there's a 1 here, a 0 here. This is probably a 1, but not much motion. And here is pretty thin. So here it's 0, 1, 0, 1, a 1. You'll notice I did not examine down here. It is frequently very, very um, tight and hard to tell. In fact, it turns out that if, for example, you're a handball player, this area is frequently edematous and you can't tell. So this is the area to concentrate. This is done symmetrically with a sim similar things on the other arm, other forearm, hand, and fingers. I won't go over that because they're exactly the same. Now I'd like to ask Mr. to lie back. So if you would, can you lie back for me? He's got a lot of pain, and so it's pretty hard for him to lie back. So now we're going to discuss examining the abdomen. That's the lower part of the rib cage, mid-axillary line, bilaterally, and pelvic brim. Similar to the upper extremities, you roll the skin, examining it in a systematic manner. And the, the abdomen is actually kind of hard to do because it fades away from you. And most of us have a little bit of extra weight, shall we say. And when I do the abdomen on Mr. as I'm doing here, and down here just a little bit, I really feel nothing, no area that's thickened. You'll notice there's folds and, and wrinkles everywhere. If there is an area that tends to be involved, it's right at the belt line, but in his case, there is none of that. Next, we'll go on to the leg. As in the arm, the thigh is examined over the dorsum, going to the lateral um, fascia lata, and medially, just to the inner line here, to the upper part of the um, knee. The most sensitive area is right here. And when I do the exam in here, you see, perhaps, that there's a little bit of wrinkling and some thickening. When I come up here, there's no longer that wrinkling. I'm sorry, there's no longer that thickening, just the wrinkling. So here is 1 plus, and here 0. So it averages out to 1, remembering that as long as there's any area involved, it has to be a 1. When we move down to the leg, from the, from the superior portion of the tibia down to the ankle, once more, we're going over the anterior portion of the leg. When you look over the shin, it tends to feel as if it's tethered down. But in fact, as you can see, there is really pretty good wrinkling and raising of the skin. Laterally, when you examine, and I don't know if you can see this, but laterally, there is some thickening here. And so this area is 1 plus, this area is 0, so once more, this is a 1. You'll notice, by the way, that this is at 90 degrees to be sure that the muscles are relaxed. And that also applies when you get to the foot, where you need to get it at 90 degrees, like this, and then you examine over the tarsus, where I'm pointing right now, ignoring the toes, it's nearly impossible to measure those, and doing the same sort of measurement here, over the tarsus as you do everywhere else. And you'll notice here how nicely it wrinkles up without any thickening. So this is zero. So this is zero. This is one. This is one. Pretending that we can be symmetrical, that would be the same over here. So that's six for the lower extremity. Abdomen is zero. Chest is one. Face is one. So that's two more, that's eight. 
and then the arm was one in the upper arm, one in the forearm, none in the hands, and one in the fingers. So it's an additional six, or a total of 16, in a diffuse distribution. I hope this has been helpful.